and we're in Crash Bandicoot 3. And like all Crash Bandicoot games, we start off with a cutscene. Where we last left off, we blew up Cortex's secret weapon with clearly no consequences. So let's find out what happens next. Uka is free? No, it cannot be. Evil, great evil has come. None can dare save the great Uka Uka even once. But you, Cortex, you have failed me twice. Great Uka Uka. It was that in... Infernal Bandicoot! From deep inside my gentle prison, I sent you simple instructions to follow. But you lost the gems, you lost the crystals, and I have lost my patience. There is now no other power source left on this planet. I know we've had a few unfortunate setbacks. And failed! But since your fumbling has managed to set me free, I am feeling generous. There is still a way to amass the power needed to enslave this miserable planet. And this time, this time, the great Uka Uka will make sure that you do it. Once again, he must be stopped. Children, Uka Uka and Cortex plan to use this time-twisting machine to gather crystals that lay scattered across time. I have brought you here to recover the crystals before they do. To open the time portal, simply stand on a button and then jump into the portal. Good luck. All right, and we're in. <laughs> I feel so good to be back in Crash Bandicoot 3. And in case you're wondering, this is my favorite Crash Bandicoot game. As well as the Crash Bandicoot I have the most experience with. <laughs> So, what's this playthrough going to be like? Eh, probably a little bit quicker than normal. Like I said, I have a lot of experience with this game. And, yeah. Personally, my favorite game. Although, I can understand it is technically the weakest and worst of the games. For reasons that might become apparent later. But before we do all that, we have to talk to Coco. In order to join the adventure. Only because there are actually some levels that Coco can only do. So we want to try to match the experience as much as we can. If we didn't care about that, we would just do the whole game as Coco and call it. But we're going to try to stay as authentic to the original as we can, starting with World 1 Toad Village. Ah, uh, so much is stuff. Oh. Crash, crash, crash. Why must you always muck in my mud? Oh, look. I have a mask helping me, too. We will find out which one is more powerful soon enough. Yep, a little bit of introduction. So, one thing you may notice, well, this is the first game with actual story that you don't have to figure out for yourself. In the first game, you know, Cortex is evil and Crash has to stop him. Second game, Cortex is evil, Crash has to stop him. But now we know all the characters and Akumaku can talk. We found out, you know, Cortex has been working for Uka Uka. All that good stuff. So, all the stories out in the open, finally. But who cares, we kind of could figure that out. To a degree, maybe not the Uka Uka part, but the rest of it. All oh, these boxes. If you don't hit them quick enough, they will turn to stone and you will miss out on the 100%. Speaking of 100%, 
I'm going to try to go for it, but no guarantees we will finish. Why? And eh, why not? Going 100% of this game actually takes a lot more effort than the previous games. Crash Bandicoot 1, get all the gems, beat every stage without dying, basically. Or maybe not. Every stage, but the key stages without dying. Crash Bandicoot 2, you had to get all the secrets, all the bonuses, all the backtracking, all that to get the 100%. Well, in this game, to get the 100%, you don't have to worry about secrets, although there are two secrets in the game. They're not actually count towards 100% for real ending. You have to do time trials. That's right. The thing that's been in Crash 1, 2, and 3. Although it was originally only a 3, you need to complete time trials for 100% completion, because that's how you unlock the secret world and alternate routes and levels. What fun, what fun. So I can't guarantee you'll go for the 100%, just because, well, you want to watch me spend 20 minutes on this stage trying to get the relic. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to see that. Although I guess I could, in theory, just record the winning run. Eh, we'll see when that time comes. We will see. Worst case scenario, we beat the game, then I just load a 100% file to show you the true ending. Speaking of endings, here we are at the end of the first level. Get these boxes, because we don't want to waste time, and there's the gem. Great, first level done. And with that, our adventure has officially begun. As you can see, Crystal Gem Relic. As well as time trial records if you want to race yourself. Do a little dance. I don't care, moving on. World 2, Under Pressure. One of the first worlds that kind of show why people don't really care for this game compared to other ones. That reason is, well, only about half the stages are actually platforming. <laughs> Yeah, but even so, knowing that and realizing that, and don't get me wrong, I acknowledge that 2 is the superior Crash Bandicoot game. This one's still going to be my favorite. Yeah, can't change my mind. Oh, and uh, in the original version of Crash Bandicoot 3, these look like they have faces. They clearly don't anymore, but yeah. So I don't know if they took away the faces on purpose or not. But I kind of miss them. Oh, great. Gotta wait for a moment to shine. Although, when it comes to time trial runs, yeah, you can kind of skip that if you're lucky, or if you have an Aku Aku mask. Ah, so much memories. And get hit. But it doesn't matter, because it's a water stage. We can't get invincibility, even if we wanted to. Alright, you can honestly tap jump to swim faster, and you can spin to swim even faster. Er, er. Yes, I just said that. Ah, uh, so much. I just feel great playing Crash Bandicoot 3 again. And here's why I love these levels. This little underwater scooter. It can go fast and it has torpedoes. Infinite torpedoes, so we don't know how they manage that. But it's just a lot of fun. Why? Because it can break coral. It can hit enemies. It can hit mines. It can do anything. Except make fries. Of course, you wouldn't want waterlogged fries. They'd be very, very soggy. And the only soggy fries I know of that are good are ones doused in ketchup. I wouldn't know. I'm a machine. But I'd like to think that holds true. And oh no, we can't go here so it magically breaks for us. Because, you know, clearly we don't mind polluting the ocean crash. We clearly don't. Although one thing I, would, I do like to point out about Crash Bandicoot in Game 1 could not swim. Game 2 could not swim. Game 3, well, now he knows how to scuba. Effectively. So, yeah, Crash Bandicoot, for being a big old goofball and doesn't seem like all of his marbles are there, is apparently really smart. <laughs> or at least can catch on to things quickly. As you'll find out in World 2, which has one of my also favorite stages. Careful. Don't want to lose this, because then we can't get these coral boxes. And with that... Oh yes, I forgot about the crystals. I forgot you have to collect them still, my bad. We did get the first crystal, right? We did get this gem, though. Cool, level done. We're just going to breeze on by. Because I will admit, these game or levels are a little bit shorter and simpler, especially if you know what you're doing. Alright, crystal and gem. I have to make sure we got the gem the first time. Or not the gem, the crystal. Okay, we did. On to world three, which is... 
a Coco level, which is another non-platforming level. All right, Coco, let's do this. Orient Express. Now, you might be asking, what kind of level is this? Well, it's like Polar. Crash has Polar, the Polar Bear Dog, or Coco has, well, Pura, the Tiger Cat. Yeah, I'm not going to question it. Now, the reason I like these levels compared to Polar's levels is because we can run, make it go faster. Look how fast I'm going, and missed a box. So, we are going to take the, I said take the hit. Thank you. But we do want to complete this 100% on our first try. Just want to show off you can run. And trust me, it gets a lot of fun when you're going for the relic. Because you basically don't let go of run, you gotta take your time jumps. It's so much fun. But as we're going for the 100%, we're gonna take our time and enjoy riding our pet cat tiger. Now, one thing I actually never knew is you can charge through these. I thought you had to dodge them. Yeah, I'm a fool. I'll admit it. <laughs> Alright, get all the boxes. Avoid these dragons, which are lethal, so I want to know what they're made out of. They look like paper. I probably they act like kites, so should it be paper? I don't know. I really don't. Alright, dodge, dodge, dodge and weave. Get the checkpoint, and they try to fake you out by going up. Now we have to land on you specifically to go up, get all these, and we're back down. That's right, they trick you with ups and downs and all the rounds. And there's the gem, or the crystal, you obviously have to get. I mean, you can dodge it, but why would you? Over you, through you, dodge you. Uh, this is taking a long time, but we want to go for the 100% the first time around. So now we have to carefully jump, run, dodge, and dodge what we didn't want to dodge. So let's fall. And as you can see, the Great Wall of China is currently being built, which means Cortex helped build the Great Wall of China. Hashtag lore confirmed. <laughs> uh, but you gotta admit, it is pretty around here. Careful. No, and we didn't want that. Yeah, this jump's a little tricky, even if you have experience doing it. Alright, let's just run. Get to here real quick. Alright. There we go. Nope, too much. Hmm. Do we just skip it? Nah. Let's do this. Run, 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 and jump, and there we go. All I gotta do is stop trying, and actually try. <laughs> and would you look at that? We're at the end of the stage, because of course we are. There's the gem, we have the crystal, another stage done. But we've only done run platforming. So you can see why, yeah, this gets a bad rep. Deserved and earned, but I still think it's a good game, and it's still my personal favorite. That's never gonna go away. Alright, with that we have a crystal, and we have another gem. That's three for three. Do your little dance, now let's get out of here and move on to the next world. Boom Yard, with two gems and a crystal. I also like the little cutscene. It helps flush out the story. And now we are in prehistoric times where everything is water and fire. I'm not going to question it. I really ain't. Now, as this is a traditional backwards level, the same tech applies. Yes, you can do that. Only there's more, well, obstacles this time. So it's not as advised. Still do it. Don't get me wrong. You should still do it. But, what little, um... I guess spoiler is, we won't be able to do this forever. Ooh, what does that mean? Well, you'll have to watch the series and find out. And somehow we did not touch the lava right there. Alright, avoid all the dragons, the water, the logs, and lava. Because this is apparently what prehistoric time was. Dark forest full of water and lava. I want to know, I'm not his, a historian. Jump off you, that's right, TNT's back in the game. In case you missed it, there's TNT and there's Nitro. Trust me, it's not going anywhere. Would you look at that? We're almost done with the first world and we have 20 lives. Almost 20 lives. We would have 20 lives if we didn't die a few times, and there's a red gem silhouette. Now, what does that mean? 
We'll simply put it where one of the gems are, and possibly the 100% gem. Now, does that mean we're going to stop? Absolutely not. We're going to keep going. Just because it's better to get all the boxes and find out you didn't have to, versus figuring out you have to get all the boxes and, well, skipping it. <laughs> More bonus rounds. At least these one try to get you to do a little bit of trickery and uh, test your skills. But, you know, some people don't want that. Which, perfectly okay. Just want a nice little simple collect 100 Wumpa and be done with it. Alright, off you because you're a spring box. Get this one up because we clearly need them. Go under here because sliding the thing that you never have to do. And we're good. I will admit, I wish it was more like, oh, you have to run and you have to slide here, jump here, high jump here, spin here. But for the most part, this game's pretty tame. Which makes sense. It's for kids. And just anybody. <laughs> rated E for everyone. That was rated E. Hit that. Up here, up here. Get all these boxes. Yay. Put some Wumpa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just taking a nice little stroll through, you know, Jurassic times. Only Crash would say, hey, there's a dinosaur. Who cares? <laughs> Although when the dinosaur does come, I think he tends to freak out a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. And in case you're wondering, that grass not only can be cut, slows you down as well. Kind of makes sense. It's grass and water. Why wouldn't it slow you down? Alright, careful, run, jump, spin, watch out for the nitro. But I think we got a nice lead, cut all the grass, hit everything, and are you serious? And in case you're wondering, you cannot, um, reset. Well, that's unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Oh well, what can you do? Move on. Alright, we have one more stage than the boss fight. We might be able to complete World 1 in the first video. A little disappointing, but what can you do? What can we do is we move on to Making Waves, another Cocoa level, and another non-platforming level. Yeah, again, not going to defend this game, I'm just going to say it's my favorite. And this time we're on a jet ski. And now we explore on a jet ski. Luckily, there's a little arrow and the boundaries to keep you inbound, so you don't get lost. You still can, it's just they really try their best to make sure you don't. This is another level where you can go fast, but if you want the 100%, you gotta make sure to take your time. Why? Because the water hitboxes are a little funky. Alright, apparently Cortex were also the pirates back in the day. Apparently Cortex was everything back in the day. Good for him. You know, most people don't get around. Alright, careful. Water's a little awkward. Careful. And we're good. Let's hope we don't mess the gem this time. Ah, uh, here we are with the bird. Sometimes that bird will hit you even if they aren't around. Sometimes they won't. It's kind of hit or miss. Like that bomb, which we missed. Although I was pretty sure I was going to get hit. Ah, uh, the crystal. The whole reason we're here and... Instantly this forgotten about. After all, most of the time you spend on these levels are getting gem boxes and getting time trial tokens. The crystals is kind of like a reason to go to this stage. And that time we did get hit. Because of course we did. Careful. Water is an illusion. Or rather has illusionary properties. Of course, who cares? We're a bandicoot on a jet ski in pirate times. What well, this is supposed to make any sense. <laughs> if you'd like to explain how this makes sense to me, feel free to lose a, lose a comment. <laughs> Leave a comment down below and try to explain to me how all this makes 100% perfect sense. And I'm not talking about game sense, I'm talking about actual sense. Alright, this should be it, and we got it. On to Tiny Tiger Boss Fight. See, I told you to be wrapping up quickly. Alright, celebrate, we got the gem and the crystal. Only missing the red gem, and, or the red gem bonus gem, and the box gem, which we just completely missed. Alright, Tiny Tiger boss fight, in Rome. For Greece.
All right, here we are. And in case you're wondering, yes, there is a cheese spot to escape or to this boss fight. There's a location where you can stand and never get hit. I don't know about it, but they did leave it in the game, and there's a little Easter egg where if you stand there, the crowd throws cheese at you. Cool little feature. I don't know where it is because I've never done this. I like to play legitimately. So here comes Tiny in the Gladiator Arena. He stomps at you with his armor and tries to hit you with that. And doesn't. Yeah, I don't know where the cheese spot is. But basically, he summons a bunch of lions. And yeah, I'm trying to find the spot. Sorry. I won't do that again. Yeah, there's one spot you could stand here where the tiger or the lions, not tigers, will never hit you. I do not know where that is, but if you do get it, the crowd throws cheese at you. It's a nice little feature. Now we dodge. The easiest way to dodge is just a spin jump. That way you hit him anyways, or not. Yeah, the hitboxes are a little wonky. Alright Crash, we gotta finish this up. The video's almost over. The first death was okay, because, you know, we wanted to show off the cheese spot. Don't know where that is, though. Maybe I'll go look it up and show you real quick at the end of the video. Now, come on. We're just going to stand right here, dodge here, dodge, dodge, dodge. There we go. And now Tiny thinks, okay, if I jump a little bit more, maybe I'll get them. But they don't. So, rinse and repeat. One more group of lions, which, yeah, once again, you just kind of dodge, only there's more this time. So, gotta be careful, gotta be careful. Careful of the patterns. And we're good, because, well, now we dodge Tiny again. Who isn't the brightest? Because he thinks if I jump one more time, that'll be enough. And it's not. And as you can see, we just got a power-up. That's right, this game has power-ups. Supercharged Body Slam. For a real powerful belly flop, press A at the, to jump, and then press B at the top of the jump to Body Slam. Which has a little quake effect. Because apparently defeating Tiny Walls is to Super Body Slam. Well done, children. By defeating Tiny, you have unlocked the gate to the next time travel area. Go back to the center of this time twister and save your progress if you wish. From there, you will see that the gate to the second time travel area is now open. Yep, what have we said, Aku Aku? Well, with that, the first world is done. Not 100%, but pretty close. And now we have Super Body Slam, and World 2 is magically open. I like to think Coco is, you know, hacking into the system to power this down, as, and just happens to take as long as it takes us to beat a world. I don't know. With all that being said, next time, World 2, coming right up. Well, that was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed playing. And if you did, please consider hitting the like button and impacting the subscribe button. It'll help out in the long run. With all that being said, this has been The Mechanist, logging off. Until next time.